Ahoy there, my rubber hearts. Gather around once more as we set sail into the uncharted waters of marine misadventures on another episode of When Rubber Meets. Today, we are diving deep into three of the most bizarre tales of lost cargo at sea. Spills that saw millions of rubber and plastic pieces spray across the ocean currents in a dramatic demonstration of how our world's waters can whisk away our wayward goods to the most unexpected destinations. But these aren't just stories of calamitous cargo mishaps. Thanks to the incredible buoyancy and longevity of rubber and plastic, those accidental ambassadors have ended up teaching us vital lessons about everything from ocean science to environmental pollution. So buckle your life jackets, my rubber hearts, as we follow the trail of these rogue rubber nomads. First incident was the Tokyo Express Lego catastrophe. Our first port of call is the North Atlantic in February 1997. The Tokyo Express, a cargo ship sailing from Rotterdam to New York City, was overtaken by a monstrous wave in treacherous seas of the coast of England. The vessel violently tilted, sending 62 shipping containers tumbling into the angry brine below. One of those ill-fated crates held a most unusual cargo. Nearly 5 million Lego pieces en route to become part of the company's classic Pirates and Aquazone playsets, including 418,000 tiny plastic flippers, 26,600 life preservers, and even 4,200 plastic octopuses. In a cruel twist of ironic oceanography, those sea team building sets were about to take an unscheduled deep dive across the Atlantic current on the greatest model shipwreck adventure a young pirate could imagine. Over the years, those distinctly shaped Lego pieces have been discovered washed up everywhere from the beaches of Britain to the Iberian Peninsula. Two decades later, they still surface, a multicolored, multi-piece reminder of both the remarkable buoyancy of injection molded plastic and the need for better cargo safeguarding on the high seas. Next, we set sail to the Pacific in January of 1992 for one of the most fortuitous marine spills in oceanographic history. Amidst powerful North Pacific storm, a shipping container holding over 28,000 friendly floaties, bad toys, was dislodged from the Everlore cargo ship and sent overboard. These cheerful floating figures, which included red beavers, green frogs, blue turtles, and most famously yellow duckies should have sunk like the bathtub playthings they were meant to be. But thanks to their solid waterproof construction, they remained buoyant and became the perfect impromptu drifters for tracking surface ocean currents. Before long, sightings of the bright bat toys began popping up everywhere. From the frozen Arctic seas to the tropical shores of Hawaii and South America, two oceanographers, Curtis Ebbesmeyer and James Ingram, recognized this accidental armada as an unprecedented opportunity to study global current flows. For over 15 years, the friendly floaties voyage was tracked and documented by beachcombers and scientists alike. They provide crucial data into the complex mechanics of the planet's ocean circulatory systems. It turned a simple overboard bat toy shipment into one of the most important ecological research tools in the modern era. Finally, let's set a course across the decades into 1990, when another rogue wave in the North Pacific struck the container ship Hansa Carrier during its journey from South Korea to the US. The battering seas swallowed over 20 shipping crates, including five containers, solely packed with an astonishing 61,000 Nike shoes of every variety, from kids' sneakers to rugged hiking boots. As luck or destiny would have it, each one of those buoyant rubber salt shoes bore a unique identifying serial number that would prove pivotal to science. Over the following months, 
Wandering Nikes began washing ashore everywhere, from the coast of the Pacific Northwest to the Hawaiian Islands. Oceanographer Curtis Evans Meyer, who had previously studied the Friendly Floaties incident, saw this as a once in a lifetime opportunity to track actual ocean currents by cataloging the locations of recovered serial numbers. Those castaway cross trainers ended up generating some of the most accurate surface flow models for the Pacific ever recorded. So, while losing over 60,000 shoes to the deep may have been a major financial blow, it proved an invaluable boon for marine science, transforming a polymer product spill into an unprecedented real-world current mapping experiment. Those wayward wandering Nikes had millions of steps to track before their journey's end. So there you have it, my rubber hearts. Three truly bizarre tales of overboard rubber runaways that turned unpredictable nautical nuisances into oceanographic opportunities. Whether it was sea swept Lego emblems, cheerfully bobbing bad toys, or roaming rubber armada of footwear, the iconic buoyancy and longevity of rubber and plastic materials meant their Queen Toxic Ocean sagas could be traced for years and years, while certainly accidental ambassadors of marine debris and pollution, these drifting rubber vagrants became instrumental in helping scientists better understand how the planet's currents and gyres circulate across vast stretches of open water. Each rogue rubber odyssey charted new paths of ecological insight. So the next time you're beachcombing and happen across some curiously well traveled bit of wayward rubber or plastic, pause and wonder just how far it might have voyaged before arriving anew on the shore. The raging seas will always have more stories to tell through the knickknacks and novelties they occasionally send our way. Don't forget to share, like and subscribe and I will see you in the next episode.